the thing that people most remember about uh, the early days of Oblong is our association with the film Minority Report. So the film's production designer, Alex McDowell, had a very serious charge from Steven Spielberg, which was, namely, to build for the film a completely believable 2054. So he had to predict everything uh, in a kind of interlocked, intermeshed way 50 years in advance, transportation, communications, politics, medicine, blah, 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 all of it. Uh, and to do so, he ended up visiting um, a whole bunch of uh, laboratories and institutions uh, where I eventually met him. And so I was brought on board as the film's technology advisor, uh, which was a hugely rewarding thing and also a great dry run, in a sense, for what we do at Oblong. By giving people a more capable UI, uh, the UI being the only part of the computer that we actually have access to as human beings, um, you'll, you'll kind of radically uh, change what people understand that they can do with computers. The idea that the pixels on the screen know where they are, not just on the screen relative to other pixels on the screen, but where they are in the room, where they are in human space, where they are in architectural space. And that makes things like pointing very, very simple computationally and geometrically, but the, the power, the cognitive power of pointing, of having the machine understand that kind of thing is, is immense. The computer science and computer languages are kind of inadequate currently, which is uh, that they, they're insensate. They don't understand time or space. There aren't constructs in most computer languages uh, for describing those quantities, but those are the most important dimensions uh, in our lives. We move through space and we do so in time, and that's just about it. That's, that's everything. I think ultimately any proper cognitive computing environment is going to subsume spatial computing. It's going to, it's going to have to offer the person in the human-machine uh, relationship, that dyad, uh, something really rich, a rich kind of UI. Uh, and I think it's already the, the vision of uh, many here at IBM working in, in the field of cognitive computing that the environments in which you interact with the kind of back-end cognitive or knowledge or AI system uh, is, is, is probably spatial. How would we actually use spatial computing environment in a, in a cognitive task? Um, I, I think the answer is sort of axiomatic. You would use the new pixel space, the new computational space, in exactly the same way that you would use a physical space. Maybe there's some automatic computation that gets triggered by that juxtaposition, but even more importantly probably is the fact that you and I can now look at this stuff in the same space, juxtaposed, uh, and let our human visual system make sense of it. There's the device itself and then there's one person, and it's meaningless essentially for you to try to use that device at the same time that I am, or for me to use your device at the same time. But why not? We use space at the same time. You, you wouldn't talk about a, you know, a, a, an enormous building that has the property that it's single occupancy. A second person can't go in. Well, the machine shouldn't have that limitation either. We want the computer to be architectural. You want to be inside it, but you want to be inside it with it kind of acting and behaving on human terms. This new kind of more capable, spatial, collaborative UI uh, is sort of a necessary and inevitable part of cognitive computing, of cognitive environment. It's, you know, there are two hemispheres that snap really beautifully together. Uh, IBM's building uh, systems, uh, knowledge systems that uh, can do astonishing new things. But to get at it, you need a new kind of UI. Uh, and so I think the two will go together very well indeed.